Um, we got to uh, just this. I didn't know whether to talk too much about this today or not, but I'm going to at least delve into it. But I'm embarrassed to report that during the show on Friday, I got word that Paul Kayard had stepped down and whether he was, it's kind of a combination of being forced out and him resigning in disgust from the leadership role. He was called executive director of Olympic sailing in this country. Uh, Paul is the third guy to step down in the last, you know, since just before the Tokyo Olympics, when Aussie, uh, Alice, uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, Page to help me out. Um, help me out with what Mr. Page's first name. Nice guy, great guy. I was living here in the Bay Area. We'd hire, we didn't, not you, I didn't have anything to do with U.S. Sailing, hired him. Malcolm, I've just come to me. Malcolm Page was, was hired and then forced out. He quit. He was forced out. He was fired. And then there was a cool, very cool guy called Greg Fisher who was in the mix for a while. He was kind of the COO. They put him in there to help Malcolm. Greg Fisher's a guy I grew up racing against. Our His dad, my dad in the Midwest, Ohio, Michigan, as Clark Chapman will well know, uh, Greg Fisher's dad and my dad raced against each other in the Lightning class and the Interlake class and various other classes. And Greg Fisher and I raced against each other in Flying Scots and Thistles and so on. And then he, he Greg, went on to be the head coach at Char College of Charleston and was hired away by U.S. Sailing. I called him up and said, you really want to do this? He said, yeah, I think this, I need to change the scenery and I can help out with Malcolm Page. Well, then he left. He got disgruntled and left very quietly. Greg's a very understated guy. Then Kayard came in, Paul, who I've been to war with three times in the America's Cup and is a leader of men and women. I've known him well for years. Love the guy. He came in with a plan, got a, a management consulting firm got McKinsey to put together a plan and fundraising and everything. So then decided that maybe I'd better run this myself when they were looking around for somebody to run it. He said, okay, I'll, I'll jump in and do it through his hat in the ring, got hired. And now it's just been, is, has been pushed out. He, he resigned in disgust on Friday. I'd known about this for a couple of weeks. It's been going on for a couple months. Paul in, in, discussions and, and angst with the leadership of U.S. sailing over money and over, o, over job description. And I have said nothing about U.S. sailing and the non-sailing CEO that they hired a couple years ago. I don't know the gentleman. I've said nothing about him until now. And I'm going to have a fair bit to say about it in the next couple minutes, and then we'll carry on. So kr has gone as of Friday. I didn't say anything about it before. I didn't because I was asked not to. And I didn't say anything about it during the show, even though several of you were texting me. And we just let it play out. Friday afternoon, Paul put out a statement. I'm not going to read the statements. Paul can be his own worst enemy. None of us is perfect. Uh, sometimes Paul is all Paul all the time, but he is so smart and he's so accomplished and so good. And his statement was a little bit I, me, we, I, I, me, my, and, you know, but it was also part of his personal angst in, you know, having come to blows with the leadership of U.S. sailing and not being able to see a way forward. He got his statement out to Scuttlebutt and circulated around. And then U.S. sailing, which again, I'm not going to read there. You can see it on the websites. U.S. sailing then sent out the lamest ass press release I have ever seen in our sport. And this, this, Forget about any you know press release that starts with champagne sailing conditions and talks about the weather and the PRO and the race, the regatta chairman for the first four or five paragraphs. This thing is the worst, mealy-mouthed, disgusting press release that U.S. Sailing put out Friday evening about reorganizing the Olympic campaign. Never mentioned Paul's name, never thanked him for his contributions. There was a quote from the president. But no, I, I mean, I, I won't tell you, some of you got it, saw it, read and sent me notes and just said that you couldn't. In fact, it was hilarious if it weren't so sad. And imagine being in the, in, in the Olympians, the U.S. Olympic hopefuls, who have been busting their picks, men, women, otherwise, to try to get to Paris. And before that, to, to go through this whole mess with Tokyo and Malcolm Page going and then Greg Fisher and now Paul. What this is whiskey tango foxtrot. This is unfrigging believable what's going on here. As Friday, Paul Kayard 
is out as head of Olympic Sailing. He said he quit. He resigned in disgust, couldn't get along with the leadership. One hears they wanted to redo his job description. They didn't want him both in charge of fundraising and in charge of team operations, so they decided to restructure, knowing full well that he'd probably go. I think U.S. Sailing's got big financial problems. I don't think they've raised the kind of money they said they would, and I think the uh, non-sailing CEO does not have a clue how to run a sailing organization, let alone an Olympic sailing program. Doesn't just have the feel. So I'm disgusted, as you can tell. Now, this is the president of U.S. Sailing. He's a nice guy. He is here from the Bay Area. He's not much of a racer. He's done some racing. His name is Rich Jepson. He was quoted in the release. Rich is from the East Bay, ran a sailing school over there for a long time. He's a member of St. Francis Yacht Club. As I said, he's a nice guy. But again, he's not a keen racing sailor like the organization U.S. Sailing. When I ran it back in the late, you know, it was a different era in the 80s. It was a racing organization. It was a pure racing organization. And now U.S. Sailing, some call it U.S. Flailing, U.S. Failing, but it's really U.S. Training. They're all about training, whether it's training in motorboats, training junior, training instructors. It's not about racing, or it is, but as one senior serious person told me Friday Eve or Saturday, I guess it was, but over the weekend, U.S. Sailing is spread so thin, it's kind of one molecule thin trying to do all things to all people, trying to be the triple A of sailing and not be focused on what people really want and need, which is a good set of racing rules, a good set of offshore rating rules or one or two or three, but at least one good one and maybe a couple others and a good Olympic team. I don't need much more than that. Clubs, classes, yacht racing associations, local sailing organizations can take care of the rest. But like our federal government in this country, like the EU in Europe, think they've got to be top-down, and instead of a volunteer organization with a small staff, that the staff in Portsmouth, which is just north of Newport, Rhode Island, of some 60 people, it's give or take 60 people. It may be 55, it might be a low 60s, I don't know, because they, I counted through the other day and counted 63, but apparently there are two, there are two pictures in, in several different departments where people have overlapping roles. Nonetheless, I had 20 people when I ran the place. And again, the volunteers, the, ex, the executive committee, the president was the CEO, not me. I was the COO, and my staff supported this volunteer organization, which was a superb yacht racing organization. In the 80s, as many of you know, when I was the executive director, we had a guy called Sam Merrick who was the voluntary head of the Olympic program, a guy I hired called Jonathan Harley, who was his diligent deputy and a bunch of very smart people, dedicated racing sailors on the Olympic committee, Olympic sailing committee, and we won a medal in every class. Okay, it was a different time. The other countries hadn't professionalized quite the way they have now, especially the Brits, maybe the Aussies, the French. But my goodness, we have completely screwed the pooch in this country. This guy has got to go. This guy is the non-sailing CEO. I've said nothing about him except in passing, mentioned him. I don't know the gentleman. I've not had, I've just kept my powder dry now for two years. When I heard that U.S. Sailing hired a guy who was in the entertainment business, had been president of the Detroit Pistons basketball team, which is not saying much, by the way, at least based on their recent record, they were great back in the, in the early 80s. This guy, I won't even read his name. I, I, he just, I, I, he and Paul could not see eye to eye, and he's trying to grab more of the fundraising reins from what one hears. This guy, another non-sailing CEO like Mr. Hunt was at World Sailing, this guy has to go. And you can all have a drink. You can start a drinking contest because every show, I'm going to remind everybody that this gentleman has to go. And the aforementioned president, Rich Jepson, and the rest of the gang on that board, including Stan Honey, you know, was a, you know, maybe the smartest guy in the sport is on that board, and some other very smart, cool people. They got to get control of this situation, get rid of this guy, and have a, a better plan. Okay, now one hears, I just before, I literally was pushing the buttons to go on the air, and I got a text from somebody saying that not only is Paul gone, but then 
head coach Luther Carpenter, and I haven't talked to these guys, so I just, I, I, this is a one hears. So I'm not telling you 100% this is true, but one hears that Luther Carpenter, Leandro Spin, uh, uh, Spin, Spina, right? Who is the development guy, terrific guy, and my old friend Charlie McKee have all stepped down, have all today resigned. So that's the whole Olympic leadership. This is Curtanicism on a level that makes all this stuff look Mickey Mouse. This guy has to go. And he has to go today or tomorrow or in the next few days because he got all these Olympians, need some leadership. They need to refocus this thing. Get rid of this guy, the non-sailing CEO. Get somebody in. I'll tell you who they should get. In fact, I'm not going to say because I don't want to, to if, if it's possible, this guy could get the job. I don't want people to say, oh, Eamon's pushing him, so we're not going to hire him. Uh, but there's a terrific guy who applied for the job before, and they didn't hire him, and this guy is a pure racer. He's a great manager of a nonprofit organization. His parents were involved, so those of you in the know will know who I'm talking about. His parents were involved intimately in U.S. sailing, U.S. Yacht Racing Union, the Etchells class, through uh, American Yacht Club, through and through yacht racers. But this guy's got to go. The wheels have completely fallen off the wagon, Jeff Holder is saying. Yes, they have. Charlie McKee resigned too. Well, that's plenty of convincing for me. My best sailing crew, my best sailing ever was his crew, Stingray, saying up in Seattle. Uh, the process to get rid of him is the, the executive committee fires him. There is a giant sucking sound. It has to fall at, at Mr. Osfeld's feet. And again, it's not simply his fault. It's that the organization that used to be volunteer-run, volunteer-driven, with a small supporting staff of professionals, myself, Ken Weller, Jonathan Harley, Mimi Dyer, and, and, and on. And we were there. You know, I had to go in sometimes and bang my shoe on the table with the executive committee and say, excuse me, we got to do this. We got to do this. Here's why. But I didn't make the final call. The volunteers, the executive committee who represented yacht clubs, yacht racing associations, and class associations. And they were all racing sailors. The name of the organization was the United States Yacht Racing Union. We were pure and simply a yachting, yacht racing organization. Sail racing, call it what you want. Till U.S. sailing gets back to that, Dean Brenner, who, who ran the Olympic program for eight years, smart guy, uh, wrote an op-ed piece last night in Scuttlebutt, said, time has come to split the organization. Let U.S. sailing go off and be the AAA of sailing. By the way, the American Sailing Association does an arguably better job of all the stuff U.S. sailing tries to do, but they see the money in training instructors and certifying instructors and then selling insurance to the instructors and the instructors' clubs. Money to support a staff of 60 people. Come on. Let somebody else do that. Focus on what racing sailors need, which is racing, the rules, the offshore rating rules, and the Olympic program, the clubs, classes, YRAs, meaning Yacht Racing Associations, local sailing organizations can do the rest. U.S. sailing, the U.S. sailing team is upside down. This is grossly unfair to the Olympic hopefuls, to the people who've given money, like Malin Burnham, like Bill Koch, like Doug DeVos, and on. I could name more, and then for this to happen. This is gross. Now, you know what else is gross? Is that today... This notification came out. Notification came out to U.S. sailing members. New year. This a, a couple of days ago, saying new U.S. sailing membership pricing takes effect next Tuesday, which is today. This came out four days ago. New U.S. sailing membership pricing takes effect next Tuesday. It's all about money, as you can always say when there's a problem. Almost always follow the money. This organization is in big trouble. The non-sailing CEO has got to go, and the executive committee has got to take control and have racing as the core competency and the core focus of the organization, not all this other shiza. Okay, enough. I've said it. I'll go to the comments. 